Ukrainian armed forces have tracked down and destroyed a rare and very expensive Russian 1K148 Yastrebe V counterbattery radar. The operation took place in the village of Kareknoi in eastern Luhansk region. The complex worth $250 million was destroyed by the 15th Separate Artillery Reconnaissance Brigade Black Forest with attacks from Hamar's multiple rocket launcher, adjusted by the Shark UAV. Yastreb AV is considered the state-of-the-art Russian radar system, which is used for reconnaissance of artillery firing positions. Using radar, it is capable of tracking the trajectory of enemy missiles and calculate the exact coordinates of its artillery positions. This data is transmitted to artillery for targeting positions. The video footage showing the destruction of the expensive radar system has been circulated in Ukrainian telegram channels. The Ukrainian leadership is allegedly seriously considering restoring its nuclear arsenal to ensure the protection of the state from Russian aggression. Build tabloid claims that several months ago, a high-ranking Ukrainian official involved in arms supplies told journalists of this publication that Ukraine will not accept a second Russian attack on Kiev and is ready, in such a case, to restore the nuclear weapons that the country renounced in the 1990s as part of the Budapest Memorandum. The interlocutor stated that Ukraine has all the necessary materials and knowledge to restore its nuclear arsenal. It will take only a few weeks to create the first bomb. The official called on Western partners to pay less attention to the Kremlin's red lines and think more about Kyiv's red lines. The publication also mentioned a statement by Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky in Brussels about nuclear weapons and notes that it shocked Western media. The Ukrainian leader said that agreements of the Budapest Memorandum did not work. The condition for Ukraine was to give up its nuclear weapons, and in return, the signatories guaranteed Ukraine's sovereignty within the internationally recognized borders of 1991. How can we trust all the partners who guaranteed the preservation of our territorial integrity? All these agreements did not work, and so it turns out that we have a choice. Either Ukraine will have nuclear weapons, or we must have some kind of alliance, the president said. Up until December the 5th, 1994, Ukraine was officially the third largest nuclear power in the world. However, it is to be noted that while Ukraine physically possessed the weapons and the expertise to develop and maintain them, although the lack of resources would have likely prevented it from doing so, Moscow retained control over these weapons. While a think tank reported that Ukraine possesses no uranium enrichment plant or fuel production facilities for nuclear power plants, where Ukrainian uranium concentrate was shipped to Russia for enrichment and fuel fabrication prior to the 2022 invasion, it's possible the country retained the knowledge base needed to restart its nuclear programs, if it so wishes. The Russian occupation army launched missile strikes on Odessa ports, where several foreign civilian vessels were hit. According to the representative of the Ukrainian Navy, Dmitry Pletenchuk, the enemy was targeting infrastructure, not vessels, because one of the main recipients of the products is China, with which the Russian Federation is unlikely to quarrel. I am not ready to agree with the thesis that this attack is aimed directly at the ships. Russians are trying, first of all, to hit the infrastructure. Pletenchuk told the Priamoy TV channel. He explains that these vessels, in addition to the flag under which they sail, have owners. Also, the countries that were supposed to receive these supplies are the largest consumers of the products that the vessels transport. That is, according to the speaker, we are talking about the final destinations where the grain arrives along the Ukrainian grain corridor, China and Spain. Of course, hitting the ships that work in the interests of these countries is probably the last thing the so-called Russian Federation wants, just like with the owners, who are from countries with which Russia would be better off not quarreling. But they, the Russians, UNIAN, are ready to take risks. Of course, they must understand the associated risks that these ships may be damaged. They are primarily trying to hit our port infrastructure, the speaker is sure. 
According to him, there is nothing new in this. The Russians carried out such strikes even during the Grain Agreement, to which the Russian Federation itself was a signatory. Now, the only thing that Russia can afford in this direction is air terror. Platenchuk also commented on the international exercises, Ocean 2024, in which the Russian Federation participated. They were held in September in the Barents, Baltic, Mediterranean, Caspian Seas, etc. According to the speaker, Ocean 2024 is a bragging of muscles on the part of the Russian Federation and the desire to show that the aggressor country has certain allies. On October the 14th, the Russian Occupation Army attacked the Odessa Sea Trade Port again, damaging two foreign civilian vessels, killing one person and injuring eight others. All victims were civilians. The Palau-flagged dry cargo vessel Optima was damaged for the second time. A week ago, the same vessel was damaged as a result of ballistic shelling. At that time, foreigners were injured, crew members. Another vessel damaged today on October the 14th was the NS Moon flagged Belize.